Hello friends and welcome to this video. We are with the seventh chapter which is titled as Wavelet Transform while learning advanced digital signal processing. So after formal introduction to what is the Wavelet family here. So now we have solid understanding of the mathematical background of the Wavelet theory. So for that purpose we have first of all studied in detail the Fourier series and then the Fourier transform. We have seen what are the lacunas of Fourier series and Fourier transform to address many real-time applications where there it is need to have analysis of information from time as well as frequency point of view. So that is why we have the topics address that is short time Fourier transform also known as windowed Fourier transform and then the continuous wavelet transform. We have seen the properties of these wavelets we have seen a comparison between continuous type and more practical discrete wavelet transform here so as in the previous video we have started to learn the most simplest form of the wavelet that it is called as the Haar wavelet the Haar wavelet transformation is made possible with the help of the scaling function and the wavelet function so in the previous video we have seen the scaling function and the corresponding functional spaces. So let us see what are the translation operation and scaling operation for the Haar scaling function in this video. Hence the topic name translation and scaling. So let us begin to see what are the details. So here we start with our topic the topic titled translation and scaling so in the previous video that it was har scaling functions and function spaces we have seen that the har scaling function is denoted by phi of t where it holds amplitude level equal to 1 for t ranging between 0 to 1 t is the time parameter and elsewhere the amplitude level is equal to 0 so see for the Haar scaling function, we have constant amplitude level equal to 1 for the time duration 0 to 1 here. Elsewhere, there it is no amplitude level, there it is considered to be 0 here. Now, let us focus on to the first term of the title that it is translation here. Now, see, whenever we are having a shifting of the scaling function as we have shown, on earlier slide and the shifting is made onto the time parameter the time axis here we get the translated versions of the Haar scaling function so originally the Haar scaling function as denoted by phi of t when we shift it by one unit onto the right hand side so it will be having a constant amplitude for the time duration 1 to 2 so we can denote it as phi of t minus 1 when we shift the original Haar scaling function by two units onto the right hand side so as in this illustration you see the constant amplitude level equal to 1 for the time duration 2 to 3 it can be denoted as phi of t minus 2 or if we have shifting of the original Haar scaling function into the negative side let us say by two units so it will be the constant amplitude level 1 or minus 2 to minus 3 so that time we can denote that particular function as phi of t plus 2 so in general we have the representation of phi of t minus k to be the translated version of the Haar scaling function see for the scaling function we have the notation by the Greek letter phi as a function of t originally here so this is what the translated version now what about the scaling function the scaling of scaling function see generally there are two types of the scalings we can make the scaling to the amplitude level and scaling to the time parameter here see for scaling operation on to the Haar scaling function in this video we are concerned to the amplitude scaling here so just have a look on to the three points here see the translates of the Haar scaling function phi of t are for example 
phi of t minus 1, phi of t minus 2, phi of t plus 1 as in general I have shown on the previous slide. So now the scaled version of phi of t. So here it is shown as phi of 10 times t or phi of 4 times t or phi of 2 times t. So to the time parameter when we have a scalar in multiplication we can say these are the scaled versions of the original Haar scaling function. So now when we have the scaling on the time parameter as well as the translation of course onto the time parameter together we get the scaled and translated versions of the Haar scaling function phi of t. The example here I have shown phi of 10t minus k in general or we can also make it to be phi of 2t minus phi u, phi of 4t minus 1 or phi of phi u t plus 3. So this way we can have the amplitude level of constant as per our requirement to any scale for any time span here. So this was the topic translation and scaling in concern to the Haar scaling function that we have seen in the previous video. By the next video, we shall continue into the same chapter to address the orthogonality condition, whether it is valid or invalid for the translated versions of the Haar scaling functions. Thank you.